And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Jamie Jolly's Farsight. Now, when I first saw Farsight, I was like, wow, that cover looks awesome. And then I saw the board, and it came with mechs. I realized quickly that the mechs came in something called the War Chest, which, as you notice, is as big as the original box. Uh, so the game itself, this is a two or team player game in which you're using a bunch of units which include mechs that are going to be fighting each other in a light war game style. But there's more to it than that. You have secret things that you're shooting assassins on the map and spies and saboteurs. So it made it sound very different than just a typical dice chucker. Let's take a look. This game is a one versus one game, although you can play with teams, I suppose. And what you're going to be doing over the course of the game is you're going to be fighting and trying to control various objectives on the board for your corporation. At the beginning of the game, you're going to be building a group of people, different units. So we have infantry, we have armor and artillery, and there's just various units for each of the sides. Here's a prototype, and these have stats on them. There's an attack, a defense, maybe some special abilities. And then some stars, this is going to be used when you're building your thing, uh, your army. But you're not just limited to these units, you also have cards that you can put in your army, like assassins and spies and saboteurs and seers and various things, which will also cost uh, stars when you're building your army. Each player is going to have a little grid board here, where we're going to keep track of everything that's on the map. And as the game progresses, you're going to be deploying people onto the map and running them around the map face down. And when you run into somebody else, you're going to be turning them face up and battling against them. On a player's turn, the first thing that will happen is that players are going to both roll a die. And if either player rolls a symbol, you'll draw an event card from the pile. So solar flare, no material units can attack this turn. A plague, lightning, minefield, eclipse, camouflage. These are just various ones. Sometimes they'll affect the random spot on the board. When that happens, you'll roll these dice here. We got letters, a 12-sided letter die, and a number die. And you'll just match on the grid where they are. A through L, and 1 through 9 on the sides of the board. Then, the players are going to deploy units. You can deploy one normal unit depending on which faction you've picked. So we got Zafar, Vestas, Daya, and Ares Corporation. Uh, and you can deploy one card. So the cards are secret. You don't know that I deployed an assassin um, until I use the assassin. If you have a extra supply line out, which is one of the cards that players can play, then you can deploy another, another unit on the board, whether it's another card or whether it's another unit that's going to go out there. We then come to the specialist phase. Whenever you deploy a, a saboteur spy supply line or a seer, uh, you write the letters here. By the way, it's kind of annoying that they all start with S's. <laughs> like, anyway, um, so you have to write two letters for each one. So you just say where you deploy them. The assassin does not deploy, but during the specialist phase, you can use your assassin, say I have an assassin, and you can shoot at someone. So maybe, for example, I say I'm going to shoot here at E4, and I'm hitting a spy. You have to say exactly what you're shooting at. So they say that it's not there. All right, fine. So it's not an E4, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 4 from the top. One, one, two, three, four, five. So I shot here. By the way, would have been really nice had they put the numbers and letters on this board. It's amazing that they didn't. But anyway, so they'll say, no, you missed. Then they'll say, but it's two spaces away. They have to tell you the shortest distance a spy is. Well, great. Well, now I kind of have narrowed it down to a two space area. So maybe I'll shoot over here later on and it'll say, no, but it's three spaces from there. Well, one, two, three, so it could be here. One, two, three could be here. So I'm slowly triangulating where they are and I'll eventually be able to get them and take that unit out of the game. Spies and saboteurs, or spies, are gonna be used to reveal an enemy unit on the board to figure out what it is that's within a certain number of spaces, which will help your opponent's assassin. Uh, seers help you with events. Saboteurs will stop units from moving, shooting, and also give them negative dice in combat. So that's what's done during that phase. Then we have the battlefield phase where you'll be able to move units. 
Uh, an unrevealed unit moves three. Once they're revealed, units can only move two. Once artillery units are revealed, you can fire them. Uh, some units are fast, so they can move three even once they've been revealed. When you run into another unit, you're both going to be attacking each other, both rolling dice. So you can see here that you have an attack, you have a defense, so you'll subtract the defense from an attack. That's how many dice you roll, but you always roll at least one die. The dice themselves are these six-sided dice I showed you earlier. This exclamation point is only used for events, so you have hits on two sides of the dice. For each hit, you'll put a damage on that unit. Three damage takes out any unit. The whole goal of the game is at the beginning of your turn to be controlling objectives on the board. If you control eight objectives, you win. That's pretty much the game. There are some other things that can be done. You can place terrain cards on the board and make your own terrain. Uh, you can, again, build armies. The, the book gives you specific armies that you can use, but that's how you play. So there's a lot to talk here, but let's talk about the big war chest. So the war chest comes with these amazingly cool miniatures. This is what attracted me to the game in the first place. When I saw these really cool miniatures that match different things here, we essentially have mechs. So if we look at these, these are fantastic. However, because they don't have the stats on them, you're either going to need to play the card with the miniatures and or just remember what they are but and since you play everything unrevealed you need to put these tiles on the board once it's revealed you flip it over you can then replace it with the miniature but i don't know it just seems kind of pointless i don't think you need the miniatures i like plastic figures but in this case it's better to stick with the original i don't think the war chest is necessary now the game board itself has a blank side if you want to put terrain on it now you might think the blank side's boring but frankly i'm really disappointed with this game board this literally looks like someone had some ideas for terrain and then just photocopied them and cut and pasted them. Like for example, here, these are exactly the same. Really? A battlefield has craters like that? And down here, oh, it rotated 90 degrees. Wow, oh. I, everything here, the trees look the same. The mountains look the same. It's like they had a few different pieces of terrain. And overall, this looks boring. It also has this very symmetrical basis. What is this? A, a wind generator plant? I, I don't I don't get this component at all. Now the artwork for the cards is fine. I like how all the different characters look. They did some good artwork on these. The, the tiles themselves are nice and thick. They give you the information. That's great. The boards here are are good and they're easy to write on. The dice are cool. Even if, well, I'll, have, I'll talk about the dice a little bit later. And then, wow, this neat letter dice. Although I did mention how it's very hard to see the grid on the board. And I'm amazed that they did not put the grid on this. That seems like just such an oversight. The damage tokens are okay. You know, they're not fantastic. But yeah, the terrain is just blah, blah. I hate the way the terrain looks. So the components for this game, honestly, for how big it is, are just okay at best. So I have very mixed feelings about Farsight, but the biggest one overall is just simply disappointment. First of all, the, like I said, the plastic stuff is neat looking, but it's very unwieldy to use because you're replacing stuff. So that's kind of like a big box of nothing. Then the mechs versus each other sounds cool, but the dice combat is crazy random. I mean, crazy random. It's insanely random and, you know, like, okay, if I have seven dice to your one, I'm probably going to win. Probably. It's really easy to roll a load of blanks and it just, it doesn't feel like there's any strategy. You just run units across the board and shoot stuff and hope it works. Artillery shoots slightly differently. There's a few special abilities on the different characters that do things and terrain affects things a little bit, but for goodness sake, it's all these things I have to look at and it comes down to it and it's just crazy random and I don't mind randomness, but there's too much here. But the specialist phase is awesome. I think it's really neat. I love using the assassin to pinpoint where someone else is on the map. And honestly, I feel like that could have been the whole game. 
There could just be a game. It's like Battleship trying to figure out. Oh, there's Battleship. But trying to slowly pinpoint where stuff is on the grid. That's really neat. And I like that. It's just that that feels at loggerheads with the rest of the game. They don't match together very well. So you have to have an assassin, right? Your opponent can't shoot your assassin, which, by the way, I think is weird. Your assassin's like this almighty thing. So you might as well get your assassin out on turn one or your supply line out on turn one so you, you can deploy more stuff. And then just start shooting up your board. Because if you don't put your assassin out, you can't shoot at your opponent's stuff. And they'll just wreak havoc on you. The saboteurs will just stop your guys from moving. The spies will reveal them. And then the saboteurs will stop them. So you have to use an, an assassin. And this is the problem with the game is it forces you to use an assassin. You have to have a supply line so you can get more stuff out on the board. Saboteurs are awesome. Spies are okay. And no one cares about a seer. Yeah, you can use it for events and everything. So I, I like the idea of the specialist phase, but the problem is, is that they are not balanced really at all. And you're kind of forced, like I said, you got to take an assassin. If you don't take an assassin, your opponent is just going to pick your forces apart. And it's also the most fun part of the game. So I'm going to take an assassin just for that purpose. But again, it's odd that the assassin themselves can't be shot. That would be intriguing. Put your assassin out on the board and they have to shoot. Is that how it works? What are they, like floating from a blimp and you, no one can reach them? <sighs> this is a huge box. It feels like it should be a huge game. But between really bad terrain and how boring the board looks to really boring combat to kind of, oh, there's a bunch of units, but they all feel the same. This one's bigger than this one. That's about the difference. And Specialist, which is a really neat idea, but doesn't come to fruition. This game is just kind of a mess. Man, it could have been so much cooler. Well, maybe the next one will be. I, I should also mention here that these mechs are really neat and all, but they feel super generic. Is this Battletech? Is this is this Mech Warrior? Um, you know, what are these mechs? I mean, the one here on the uh, specifically on the front of the Farsight War Chest really looks like it's from Mech Warrior. Um, but eh, what do I know? Alrighty, well that's Farsight. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time. Dice Tower Judgment, some cool ideas, but ultimately flawed.